You can stop now. Yes. Okay, we're going to continue on with chapter 10 yes. of the opening of the eyes, starting on page 98, um, which is going to go right into the encouraging devotion chapter and the 20 line verse. Okay, mm -hmm. and as I had said last week, at mm -hmm. the very beginning of this chapter, he talks about um, page 268 to 278 from the Gosho being very important. And there's actually also a very important uh, term that's expressed within that 10 pages of text. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to um, I'm going to read the balance of chapter 10, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to read the Gosha. Okay. okay. And then I'll get into the term casting off the transient and revealing the true. When I hit that point, and then I'm going to read the persecution by the sword and staff. So last week. Uh, a week before last, actually, because last week we, we spent doing a, a different subject. Week before last, we ended on page 98, where we start, where you go, start to go into uh, a bright mirror reflecting the present state of the country. Yes. Okay. I'm going to go backwards a little bit, so that you guys can make some sense of that, since it's been two weeks. Okay. And since we already know that we're going to be starting in on the section about the three powerful enemies, I'm just going to start reading at the top of column two, page 97 of the three powerful enemies, part one. Okay, you ready? Yes. All right. And, and, and again, this is continuing the lecture. Certainly, he's, he's already spoken a little bit about here, but, but I'm, I'm going to jump in the middle. The top of page 97, second column. Certainly, the persecutions by the three powerful enemies predicted in the encouraging devotion chapter are frightening. But once we understand the essence of the devilish forces behind these persecutions, it becomes obvious that what is truly uh, terrifying is the devilish nature inherent in human beings. In, in this treatise, however... The Daishonin, having risked his life to fight for Kosen Rufu and subsequently triumphing over all obstacles and devilish functions, displays an indomitable spiritual state. Thus, he says, there is nothing to fear, not even amid the most terrible persecution or hardship caused by devilish functions. The spirit to battle powerful enemies is the heart of the Lion King. As long as we possess the readiness and courage to confront these negative forces, we can manifest our inherent Buddhahood and bring forth the necessary fighting spirit, wisdom, and life force to achieve victory. For that reason alone, we have nothing to fear. Accordingly, there is nothing to be frightened about from page uh, 269. It expresses the heart of the Daishonin, the Lion King, and his disciples, the Lion King's cubs, who fight alongside him with the same selfless spirit. Others will be terrified from page 269. Meanwhile, refers to the hearts of those who do not practice with an ungrudging spirit and who are in danger of abandoning their faith out of cowardice. Let me repeat that again. What did he just say about that? He says, there is nothing. He says, others will be terrified. But who does he qualify the others will be? The one that have no faith. Exactly, but why? Because these three powerful enemies only attack people of faith. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yes. Understand that. Mm -hmm. People that don't practice don't get attacked by the three powerful enemies. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And people that don't practice with faith don't get attacked by the three powerful enemies. Do you understand? Accordingly, mm -hmm. there is nothing to be frightened about, he's saying, to those individuals of faith. Mm -hmm. Mm. expresses the heart of the Daishon and the Lion King, the Buddha nature, actually each in his sons in, right? Mm. And his disciples, every single one of us as well, yeah. that fight it with the same spirit that he has. Now I feel better. Others will be terrified, meanwhile, refers to the hearts of those who do not practice with an unbe ungrudging spirit. Now what's an ungrudging spirit? Do not begrudge your life. Okay, that means that you hold nothing back. That's an ungrudging spirit. Yes. An ungrudging spirit means when you don't feel like it, 
when you're too tired, mm -hmm. when everything went wrong, you right. still do it anyway. That's ungrudging, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And because they're un, they're, 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 they are, do not practice with an ungrudging spirit, they are in danger of aban abandoning their faith out of cowardice. Why? Because they don't get the connection to the Gohonzon mm -hmm. that faith provides mm -hmm. that makes you the heart of the Lion King. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Without the heart of the Lion King in the nine world, not common mortal mm -hmm. existence you have, you become a coward. Mm -hmm. It's scary. Mm -hmm. The bravery comes from your life condition. Mm -hmm. Okay? The scary comes from not enough faith. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next... Uh, the, uh, t -t 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 in other words, Nietzsche was concerned that people who lacked resolve, firm resolve and commitment in faith would read the passage about the three powerful enemies in encouraged devotion and be overcome by fear and apprehension. Cowardice is a state in which people have succumbed. What does succumbed mean? Given into inner devilish functions. Okay, so if you're fighting devilish functions, you're mm. not dealing with cowardice. That's the heart of the Lion King. Mm -hmm. If you're giving in to devilish functions, that is cowardice. Do you understand? Yes. Mm -hmm. This can progress to such a profound level. What? This can. Strong faith can. No. Mm -mm. Feel this. this giving in to devilish oh. functions can progress to such a profound level that they eventually lose their vitality. Mm -hmm. They no longer derive re 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 rejuvenation from Daimoku. Mm -hmm. Daimoku becomes a chore. Mm -hmm. Daimoku becomes no effect. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. That is from them, not from the Gohonza. Understand that. It's their actions that lead to that result. Nothing about the Gohonzon. That's why he's making this distinction for you mm -hmm. to understand now. Mm -hmm. All right? This can progress, progress to such a profound level that they eventually lose their vitality. They think they know what they don't know. They begin to sleepwalk through faith. They don't read the Go Show anymore. They already know what the Go Show says. They already know what President, guidance, President Kata's guidance is. They know how to go to meetings and support. Mm -hmm. That becomes the basis of their practice. Mm. But that isn't the basis of one's practice. What is the basis of one's practice? Faith. faith. Yes, faith. but faith to what end? This is a key. <laughs> faith to attain Buddhahood. Mm -hmm. And once you've attained Buddhahood, to show others how to mm -hmm. attain Buddhahood. Mm -hmm. That's all practice is for. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. Practice yeah. isn't for gaining benefits. Benefits arise naturally when you practice correctly. Yes. With the heart of a lion king. Do you get it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's read that paragraph straight through, then finally get to a bright mirror. This can progress to such a profound level that they eventually lose their vitality and wisdom and even find their whole lives, their whole lives, after years of practice, tumbling inexorably. What does inexorably mean? They don't have a freaking clue why. Inexorably means without understanding. No understanding. Yes, inexorably toward defeat. Why? But I chant. But do you chant correctly? Did you ever give enough of a shit to figure out what chanting correctly is? Mm -hmm. Did you ever go about changing yourself when you found out that difference? Or did you just continue as good as everybody else? Mm -hmm. Did you use everybody else as the measuring stick? Or did you use the teachings of Nietzsche and Daishonin and the practice of Daisaku Ikeda as the measuring stick? This is the difference. Mm -hmm. The Daishonin sternly warns that we should not let this happen to us. Mm -hmm. Sternly. Okay, everybody with me? Now I'm all woken up. Now I got all, a lots of energy. Okay, ultimately, unless we undertake 
the same. What he didn't know what he's saying. I didn't know he was going to say this, mm. but this is exactly what I just said. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, unless we undertake the same resolve as our mentor in faith, mm. we will be defeated by devilish functions. Mm. Okay, so we either become one of with uh, of one in mind with Nitrin, or we go Titan. It's as simple as that. You won't make it to 40 years of practice. That's the whole point. What did I say from uh, on attaining a Buddhahood in this lifetime? Uh, you know, your, your practice will become an, uh, uh, an endless... Uh, 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 will become an endless painful... Endless mm painful... -hmm. What? An endless, painful something. Thank you, Diane. Your practice will become an, or uh, an, uh, what is the word? <laughs> it's the perfect word, it's the correct word. Excuse me. An endless, uh, arduous, I'll find it later. Sorry about that. Okay, going on to page 98. Uh, all right. Uh, ultimately, unless we undertake the same result as our mentor in faith, we will be defeated by devilish functions. This is why the Daishonin's call to his disciples to rise into action with a vow equal to his resonates throughout this treatise. A bright mirror reflecting the present state of the country on page 98. The encouraged devotion, encouraging devotion chapter states, and here's the 20 line verse. We beg you not to worry. After the Buddha has passed into extinction in an age of fear and evil, we will preach far and wide. There will be many ignorant people who will curse and speak of ill of us and, we will, and will attack us with swords and staves. But we will endure all these things. In that evil age, there will be monks with perverse wisdom and hearts that are fawning and crooked who will suppose they have attained what they have not attained, being proud and boastful in heart. Or there will be forest-dwelling monks wearing clothing of patched rags and living in retirement, who will claim that they are practicing the true way, despising and looking down on all humankind, greedy for profit and support. They will preach the law to white-robed laymen, who will be respected and revered by the world as they were arhats who possessed the six transcendental, transcendental powers. These men, with evil in their hearts, think, constantly thinking of worldly affairs, will borrow the name of forest-dwelling monks, and take delight in proclaiming our faults. Because in the midst of the great assembly they constantly try to defame us, they will address the rulers, high ministers, brahmins, and householders, as well as the other monks, slandering and speaking ill of us, saying, These are men of perverted views who preach non-Buddhist doctrines. In a muddied age, in, an e in a muddied kalpa, in an evil age, there will be many things to fear. Evil demons will take possession of others and through them curse, revile, and heap shame on us. The evil monks of that uh, muddied age, failing to understand the Buddha's expedient means, how he preaches the law in accordance with what is appropriate, will confront us with foul, lung, foul language and angry frowns. Again and again we will be banished. Page 269 to 270 from the Gosho, and then from the Lotus Sutra, uh, 232 to 234. Uh, second, uh, second, Paragraph on page 99. The first full paragraph. The Daishonin next cites principal extracts from the 20 line encouraging devotion verse section that describes the three powerful enemies. The section begins with the Bodhisattvas making a powerful pledge. Addressing Shakyamuni, they say, We beg you not to worry. After the Buddha has passed into extinction in an, e in an age. Um, in an age of fear and evil, we will preach far and wide. Then they, will ex then they explain in detail the characteristics of those who will persecute them, as well as 
what form those attacks will take. Based on this verse section, the great teacher Miolo of China later classified the persecution into three groups and named them into the three powerful enemies. The first enemy is arrogant lay people, ignorant of Buddhism. They curse and speak ill of the practitioners and attack them with swords and staves, thus persecuting and uh, through both persecuting them through both verbal and physical violence. The second entity is arrogant priests. These are priests of an evil age who possess perverse wisdom and are fawning and crooked, who suppose they have attained enlightenment when they have not, and who are attached to their own pre preconceived ideas and beliefs. The third <laughs> enemy is arrogant false sages. The false sages. These are people who try to pass themselves these are people who try to pass themselves off as sages. The sutra describes them as having the following traits. They live apart from others, don robes, and make a show of religious authority. Two, while claiming to practice the correct way of Buddhism themselves, they disparage others. In the words of the sutra, they despise and look down on all humankind. Three, greedy and avaricious. They expound the law to lay people in order to seek personal profit and gain. Four, they are revered by people in society as if they were arhats possessing the six transcendental powers. Five, they harbor malice, malice toward practitioners of the Lotus Sutra and cause them to be persecuted in various ways. Six, they use their religious authority just to discredit practitioners of the Lotus Sutra. Seven, they make false allegations about the Lotus Sutra's practitioners to the authorities and to uh, influential people in society. And eight, they denounce the Lotus Sutras practitioners as people of perverted views who, pra who preach non-Buddhist doctrines. The Daishonin called forth each of the three powerful enemies and overcame them all. His declaration of victory over them is the pronouncement cited earlier where he says, I survived even the Tatsunokuchi persecution. Who specifically constituted the three powerful enemies that appeared during the Daishonin's lifetime. The Daishonin discusses this in detail in the opening of the eyes, but for now, there, here are his conclusions. First, with regard to arrogant lay people, the first category, he says this refers to important lay believers who support priests in the second and third categories. This indicates the key government figures who, in the Daishonin's day, supported high-ranking priests of Kamakura's main Buddhist temples. Next, he says arrogant priests are people like the Pure Land or Nimbutsu priest Honen who disregard the precepts and hold perverse views. This signifies the Nimbutsu priests throughout Japan who draw their lineage from Honen. You with me? Yes. All right. As for arrogant false sages, from one standpoint, he says this refers to people such as Sayuchi Shoichi of Kyoto and Ryokan of Kamakura, mm -hmm. while from another he says it refers to Ryokan, Nin A, and others. Of those whom the Daishonin specifically lists in this category, the name of Ryokan stands out. That's two fires, right? That's, his, that's the guy that got him to, off to Tatsunokuchi. Yes. He no doubt wishes to underscore that Ryokan is the one person who most aptly fits the description of an arrogant false sage. Indeed, both the Tatsunokuchi persecution and Sato exile can be traced to the maneuverings of this arrogant false sage. Ryokan, along with Nimbutsu priests such as Nin E, joined forces with the powerful government official Heino Seiman and other authorities to do away with the Daishonin and destroy his community of followers. In the opening of the eyes, the Daishonin ends his discussion in this section by indicating that the appearance of the three powerful enemies offers conclusive proof that he is the votary of the Lotus Sutra in the latter day of the law, which will be the last page of the 10 pages that I'll read. Okay? As we have seen, the bright mirror of the encouraging devotion chapter not only depicts those who will carry out the persecution, but also describes the future votaries of the Lotus Sutra. That is why the Daishonin calls it the bright mirror that reflects the country's present state, while also indicating that it is a prophecy made by Shakyamuni, many treasures, and the other Buddhas. So does everybody understand that? About that 20 verse line? 
It speaks of the bodhisattvas that, it speaks of what the bodhisattvas that will propagate the law in the fifth, after the fifth half millennium will endure and who they will face. You understand? Mm -hmm. Those aren't the bodhisattvas of the earth that make those pronouncements in the encouraging devotion, mm -hmm. but they do qualify the circumstance of the three powerful enemies mm -hmm. as it will be met in the latter day of the law, mm -hmm. yes. right? So right. even though they're not the bodhisattvas of the earth, they're speaking for Nichiren. Again, understand, the whole Lotus Sutra, mm -hmm. the whole Lotus Sutra was written so that Nichiren could divine from the treatises from Nanye, Dingyo, or Nanye, Tentai, Miolo, Dingyo, he could reach into the depths of the 16th chapter and pull out the Buddhism of the sowing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But the only people that are going to be here to do the Buddhism of the sowing with him are the Bodhisattvas of the earth. Mm -hmm. They haven't come yet <laughs> in chapter 12. They're not in chapter 12, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to take, we have to view the entire Lotus Sutra from the perspective of the latter day because we don't live in the former or the middle day, and we don't live in Shakyamuni's time. That's why we take the entire Lotus Sutra and we go into the orally transmitted teachings. The OTT doesn't just start with chapter 16, does it? No. No, the OTT stock talks about a Buddhism of the sowing view of introduction chapter, of expedient means chapter, a simile and parables chapter, on and on and on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to understand that when you read literally the Lotus Sutra saying this prior to the merging from the earth, it's mm. still speaking in regard to us as it relates to how the Daishonin taught us to read it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And he's teaching us to read the encouraging devotion chapter with our lives as he did. Right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Now everybody's with me? Now you understand why I'm saying what I'm saying. Okay. Where am I? Okay, uh, I'm in the second paragraph on page 100. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to start from the first one again. Everybody's with me why I said what I said though, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, who specifically constituted the three powerful enemies at the top that appeared during the Daishonin's lifetime at the top of page 100? The Daishonin discusses this in detail in the opening of the eyes, but for now, here are his conclusions. First, with regard to arrogant lay people, the first category he says this refers to important lay believers who support priests. Oh, I already read all the way down yes. here. Pardon yeah. me. Yeah. This indicates that he government. <coughs> Where am I? Say this, it out loud. This indicates the key government figures. I'll pass that. Who? Uh, I'll just go ahead and start reading then. Again, okay. first with the regard to arrogant lay people, the first category, he says this refers to important lay believers who support priests in the second and third mm -hmm. categories. This indicates the key uh, government figures who in the Daishonin's day supported high-ranking priests of Kamakura's main Buddhist temples. Mm -hmm. Next, he says, arrogant priests are people of like the pure lander Nimbutsu priest Honen who disregard the precepts and hold perverse views. Yeah. You're with me? Yeah. This signifies the Nimbutsu priests throughout Japan who drew their lineage from Honen. As for false arrogant sages, I did already read this. Mm -hmm. yeah. From one standpoint, he says this refers to people such as uh, Shoichi of Kyoto and Ryokan of Kamakura, while from another, he says it refers to Ryokan, Nina, and others. Of those whom the Daishonin specifically lists in this category, the name of Ryokan stands out. Two fires. He no doubt wishes to underscore that Ryokan is the one person who almost aptly fits the description of an arrogant false sage. Indeed, both the Tatsunokuchi persecution and Sato exile can be traced to the maneuverings of this false, of this arrogant false sage. Ryokan, along with Nimbutsu priests such as Nina, joined forces with the powerful government official Haino Seiman and other authorities to do away with the Daishonin and, and, des and destroy his community of followers. In the opening of the eyes, the Daishonin ends this discussion of this sec in this section by indicating that the appearance of the three powerful enemies offers conclusive proof that he is the votary of the Lotus Sutra in the latter day of the law. Mm -hmm. As we have seen, the bright mirror of the encouraging devotion chapter not only depicts those who will carry out the persecution, but describes <coughs> the future votaries of the Lotus Sutra. That is why the Daishonin calls it a bright mirror that reflects the country's present state 
while also indicating that it is a prophecy made by Shakyamuni, many treasures, and other and the other Buddhas mm. for the Bodhisattvas mm. of the earth and the votary of the Lotus Sutra in the latter day of the law, mm -hmm. who will expound the Buddhism of the sowing. Mm. Persecutions arise from ignorance, perverse wisdom, and malice. Consider in that light how significant this mirror, pardon me, considered in that light how significant this mirror, this in this mirror, this prophecy is. The Lotus Sutra predicts that persecution will befall its votaries in the evil age to come, even describing in detail that it will be carried out by arrogant lay people, arrogant priests, and arrogant false sages. And the Daishonin, in fact, underwent persecutions that perfectly matched the Sutra's descriptions. The next chapter will discuss the significance of the concordance between the Sutra and the Daishonin's practice. Here, let's address the question of why this close symmetry is possible. There are two main points we should, we should consider. One is that the Lotus Sutra offers a detailed explanation of the workings of the devil king of the sixth heaven that are activated by the fundamental darkness inherent in life. And the other is that the Daishonin, in exact accord with the Lotus Sutra and without, without begrudging his life, actually strove to spread the teaching of universal enlightenment in the latter day. As he describes in the opening of the eyes, the latter day of the law is undoubtedly an age when conditions in the world decline and people become increasingly shallow in wisdom and when sages and worthies gradually disappear from the scene, the scene and deluded people increase in number. The true crisis of the latter day lies in the fact that people subserviently adhering, adhering to authoritarian teachings or beliefs, mm -hmm. reject the Lotus Sutra's profound religious philosophy, causing their minds to grow increasingly distorted. Mm -hmm. It is even more difficult, therefore, for people of the latter day, an age of unceasing human conflict and mistrust, to accept the Lotus Sutra, a teaching of universal enlightenment, conveying the message that all living beings are equal and worthy of respect. They shun it simply because they have difficulty understanding it. Mm. Further, they even come to bear animosity toward the Lotus Sutra's practitioners who, in, who courageously spread this profound teaching and earnestly endeavor for the genuine encouragement of all people. This is analogous to how someone whose eyes have become accustomed to the darkness cannot look directly at the sun's rays. Mm. People consumed by hatred and jealousy despise and resent both the Lotus Sutra, which expounds the infinite potential of all human beings and those who propagate it. I'll read that sentence again. Mm. People consumed by <laughs> hatred and jealousy despise and resent both the Lotus Sutra, which expounds the infinite potential of all human beings and those who propagate it. It pisses them off to hear you talk about the fact that everybody's already a Buddha. You're already a Buddha. What was never disparaging saying to those guys? Was he saying, screw you? No. no. He was saying great, wonderful things about them, and it was pissing them off. And yeah. that same thing will occur. Yeah. That's what he's just saying. I'll read it again. Mm -hmm. Again, everything in the Lotus Sutra happens to you too if you open your eyes enough to understand your life from that perspective. This is analogous to how someone whose eyes have become accustomed to the darkness cannot look directly into the sun's rays. Do you understand what he's talking about? If you've been in the dark long enough and you come out into the light, you can't see shit even though the bright sunlight has everything illuminated so that you should be able to see it. Your eyes can't see. Mm -hmm. Your eyes are what's unaccustomed to the light of the truth mm -hmm. of the day. Do you understand? Yes. All right. This is analogous to how someone whose eyes have become accustomed to the darkness cannot look directly at the sun's rays. People consumed by hatred and jealousy People living in darkness mm. despise and resent the Lotus Sutra. They couldn't, po even if they're not conscious of it that way. Okay? If they hate other people, that's what they're doing. All right? Which expounds the infinite potential of all human beings 
and those who propagate it. So that means those who are saying these ridiculous words, everybody's a Buddha. Okay? This is the frightening reality of people whose lives are steeped in slander of the law. They will hate you. So they are slander. That's what we've been saying all yeah, right. along. Yeah. They're where fundamental darkness comes from. Mm -hmm. It comes from their act reaction to the law, not your innate slander. Mm -hmm. That's why, again, mm -hmm. it comes out as, as Sancho Shima. That's what we're talking about here. All right? Mm -hmm. okay. Fundamental darkness doesn't... It, 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 as long as you don't ruffle fundamental darkness, as long as you don't try and go in the light, fundamental darkness will, will keep you warm and safe and secure and no problems. <laughs> will do any it will be your best friend it's not something that constantly makes pain in you that's not the function of fundamental darkness but what is fundamental darkness the devil that punishes you no no, no. fundamental darkness is the abness absence of your buddha nature it's the absence of the wisdom to perceive the truth that's all it is what is the truth that i speak of that you are the Buddha exactly as you are and you always have been. And so is everybody else. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is analogous to how someone whose eyes have become accustomed to the darkness cannot look directly at the sun's rays. People consumed by hatred and, je hatred and jealousy despise and resent both the Lotus Sutra and those who propagate it. This is the frightening reality of people <coughs> whose lives are steeped in the slander of the law. And they could be practicing and still be have lives steep slander in the law. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what I've been saying here. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Chanting Nam Yoho Rengekyo is not the qualifier here. Mm. All right? Mm. Chanting it with faith, being of the same mind as Nichiren, is the qualifier. That's mm -hmm. what brings all this out. You can still be a Soka Gakkai member and have a life steeped in slander of the law. You mm. can have the Gohonzon and have a life steeped in slander of the law. Yes. You read it, but you don't believe it. Mm. You go to meetings, but you don't believe it. You encourage people, but you don't believe it. All right? Yeah. The encouraging devotion chapter states that the persecution of the Lotus Sutra's votaries is initiated by arrogant lay people. Mm. Doesn't qualify what kind of lay people, right? Mm. They could be Soka Gakkai member arrogant lay people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Out of ignorance. What is ignorance? Stupidity? No. Mm -hmm. Lack of understanding. Lack of effort to understand. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. By arrogant priests. Out of perverse wisdom. They think they know what they don't know. Yeah. They think they have the answer and quit looking for any more. Yet they teach people as though they are the end. They already know. Okay? And by arrogant false sages out of evil in their hearts. Because they know how to work they know how to work. They could become celebrities. Mm -hmm. They could be, they got big fat beads in TV shows. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Mm -hmm. Arrogant, yes. false sages. They could give a shit. They really want money. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay? Yeah, 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 of course. Or malice. This indicates that when fundamental darkness manifests itself in the world, it does so in three phases. Mm -hmm. Ignorance, perverse wisdom, and malice. That's Soka philosophy there. In other words, ignorant people are readily swayed and incited by those of perverse wisdom. They know how to work those ignorant people. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. yes. All right. And malice, the second and third enemies. That is why it is most often lay people who directly attack the practitioners of the Lotus Sutra through verbal abuse and even physical violence. You with me? That's a fact. It isn't usually priests that go out and do that. Next, are those hostile people in whom fundamental darkness manifests as perverse? Mm -hmm. Next, are those whose hostile, pardon me, next are those hostile people in whom fundamental darkness manifests as perverse wisdom. While they leave secular life in order to pursue the Buddha way, mm -hmm. they regard only the limited teachings they can understand as absolute and erroneously conclude that these alone are correct. Does everybody know what we're talking about? Yeah. What are we talking about? We're talking about priests. Priests? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Huh? The 
people that you were just saying that they, yes, know, they next, know everything. But yeah, but we're talking specifically about the second of the uh, three powerful enemies, and those are evil priests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Or where did he qualify it? Uh, it's here somewhere. Yes. It was evil priests, right? Right. Perverse with arrogant priests out of perverse yeah. wisdom. Okay, at the top, he, at the top of page one hundred and one, he's got uh, arrogant lay people out of ignorance, arrogant priests Peace. out of perverse oh, wisdom, mm -hmm. and arrogant false sages out of evil in their hearts. Get it mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay, so next are those hostile people in whom fundamental. Uh, darkness manifests as, manifests as perverse wisdom. While they leave secular life, what would that mean then? When they leave secular life. Monk. When they become priests, right. When they become religious people, mm -hmm. religious authorities. In order to pursue the Buddha way, they regard only the limited teachings they can understand as absolute and erroneously conclude that these alone are correct. That's what I was just saying, <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. And particularly when it comes to the Lotus Sutra with its promise of enlightenment for all, they cannot accept it. Everybody's with me, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Believing it undermines the absolute status of the particular provisional Buddhas in which they have misguidedly placed their faith, right? Because they are religious yeah. people, right? right. Mm -hmm. As a result, in various ways, they try to demean the Lotus Truth Sutra's significance. Mm -hmm. Got it? They don't want to say it's a Supreme Sutra because otherwise they then have to quit doing all the other things they're doing if they're going to follow the Supreme Sutra. Got it? Mm -hmm. Such priests come to harbor strong enmity toward practitioners correctly spreading the Lotus Sutra. Mm -hmm. Right? Because we're actually taking a position that's in conflict with them and we're lay people and yet they're priests. You with me? Are we about out of time already? Okay. Finally, there are those who f whom fundamental darkness manifests as malice similar to the devilish nature inherent in power and authority. All right? Mm. It could also be described as the great arrogance of those who employ religious authority to fulfill their personal desires and ambitions. Now, how would you, in your mind, separate those two, between the second and the third? Uh, to me, one is... Arrogant priests, okay, they think they know what they don't know. Mm -hmm. The other one is they have an agenda. It's not about thinking they know what they don't know as much as it is trying to manipulate people for their own gain and status. Mm -hmm. Do you follow? Mm -hmm. That's what Ryokan did versus a Nimbutsu priest. Do you understand? A, a Nimbutsu priest would have just been saying, do a, a Mita, do a Mita, do a Mita. Yeah, yeah. That would have been his focus, do a Mita. Mm -hmm. Whereas Ryokan is, kill thy shonen. Mm -hmm. Take him to Tatsunakuchi and cut yeah. off his head. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, difference. there's a difference. Huge difference. There's a, a, a level difference, right? Mm -hmm. the lay people, priests, yeah. evil. Mm -hmm. True evil. Because they know better, they don't care. These people don't know any better. They're ignorant. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, finally, there are those who, in whom fundamental darkness manifests as malice similar to the devilish nature inherent in power and authority. Mm -hmm. It could also be described as the great arrogance of those who employ mm -hmm. religious authority to fulfill their personal desires and ambitions. That's why I said you get big bees in your own TV show. That's what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Lotus Sutra states that arrogant false sages, or you start out asking for pennies and become the biggest money laundering entity in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Lotus Sutra states that the arrogant false sages, proud of their authority, despise and look down on all humankind. This is the exact opposite of the spirit of the Lotus Sutra. The exact opposite. Everybody's equal. Everybody's equal. Mentor and disciple are equal, for Christ's sake. Yeah. Okay? You're connected. You're one with the object of devotion, for Christ's sake. Okay? <clears throat> it doesn't get any more level yeah. Yeah. than equal. the Buddhism of the sowing. Mm. This is the exact opposite of the spirit of the Lotus Sutra, which teaches respect for all people. Not surprisingly, false sages bear bitter hatred towards the sutra's votaries, 
fabricating outrageous accusations to discredit them. Mm -hmm. As the ultimate expression of this malice, these false sages incite influential secular leaders to perse persecute the Lotus Sutra's practitioners. Now you know there's a parallel to everything, every time he's talking about this. Do you, do you know what the parallel, parallel is? It's Daisaku Akeda and, and, and Nikkei. <coughs> Same thing. <coughs> Same thing. Because their fundamental darkness is so deep, people of malice with evil in their hearts become the devilish nature personified. They stop at nothing to achieve their ends. Excommunication. And therefore become the root cause of the persecution of the Lotus Sutra's practitioners. Okay? Genuine, practitioner, genuine practitioners correctly spread the teaching of universal enlightenment. In other words, they blow off those false sages. Okay? Disregard the adversity and go and do what they're supposed to do. Genuine practitioners correctly spread the teaching of universal enlightenment and fight without retreating against the devilish force, forces that seek to fundamentally distort the spirit of Buddhism. When we understand the true nature of this struggle, we can naturally foresee that <laughs> ignorance of the correct teaching, namely fundamental darkness, will, manifor, will manifest in the form of arrogant lay people, arrogant priests, and arrogant false sages who will persecute the votaries of the Lotus Sutra. Okay? That's the end of chapter 10. What time is it? Uh, 15 minutes left. Okay, great. Perfect. I'm going to go to page 268 of volume 1. This is the opening of the eyes, section 2. And this is the uh, 10 pages that he referred to in this last chapter 10 where he said uh, the Daishonin is going to reveal his uh, true identity as the votary of the Lotus Sutra, the latter day of the law. And again, when I, when I went back and looked what 10 pages this was, I started seeing that I had made my own asterisk, asterisks all over the place here. So this must be some good stuff to read. So let me read the actual Go Show itself. All right? I'm going to start with page 268, the second paragraph. It says, putting all this aside, and what he's been talking about up to now is that he's been talking about all these other sutras and, what they, and the fact that they all say that they're the superior teaching. Right? He says, putting all this aside, I will point out the truth for the sake of my followers. So whenever you're reading a Go Show, and he's been laying down all this doctrinal... Dogma, all right. Mm -hmm. Almost, all right. Mm -hmm. When he puts something where he says, I point out the truth for the sake of my followers, ba boom. Okay, this is to you. This means that now I'm going to write how I see it. <clears throat> okay? Because others do not choose to believe it now, they are persons who thereby form a reverse relation. By tasting a single drop, one can tell the favor of the great ocean, and by observing a single flower in bloom, one can predict the advent of spring. One does not have to cross the water to far off Sung, China, spend three years traveling to Eagle Peak in India, enter the palace of the Dragon King the way Nagarjuna did, visit <coughs> Bodhisattva Maitreya in the Tushita, Tushita heaven the way Bodhisattva Asanga did, or be present at the two places in the three assemblies when Shakyamuni preached the Lotus Sutra in order to judge the relative merits of the Buddhist lifetime teachings. Do you understand? It is said that snakes can tell seven days in advance when a flood is going to occur. This is because they are akin to dragons who make the, uh, the rainfall. Crows can tell what lucky or unlucky events are going to take place throughout the course of a year. This is because in the past existence they were diviners. Birds are better at flying than human beings. And I, Nitrin, am better at judging the relative merits of the sutras than Chun Kung. Ching Quan of uh, the Flower Garland School, Chia Sheng of the Three Treatises School, Tzu In of the Dharma Characteristics School, and Kobo of the True Word School. That is because I follow in the footsteps of the teachers Tiantai and Dingyo. If Chang Kuang and the others had not accepted the teachings of uh, Tiantai and Dingyo, how could they have expected to escape the sin of slandering this law? I, Nitrin, and the richest man in all of present day Japan. So what does he say here? Mm. He's saying that basically everybody that doesn't listen to me is still forming a relationship with my teaching. Mm. Okay, that's the first thing he said. Mm. And then he's basically saying, even though I'm much less famous than any of those other dudes, I am much more capable than them 
of, de of, of, describe, of, of expressing to you what's appropriate. Mm -hmm. He says then, I, Nietzsche, am the richest, day, richest mm -hmm. man in all of present day Japan. I have dedicated my life to the Lotus Sutra and my name will be handed down in ages to come. Now he's writing this from Sato Island mm -hmm. after they just tried to cut his head off and they've just exiled him with the, with, with the intent of him dying there. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, I'm the richest man in Japan and uh, my name's going to be handed down in ages to come. If, if one is the lord of the great ocean, then all the gods of the various rivers will obey one. Do you understand what he's saying? He's saying, if one is the king of Mount Sumeru, then the gods of the various other mountains cannot help but serve one. Do you follow what he's saying? If, if a person fulfills the teachings of the six difficult and nine easy acts of the Lotus Sutra, as he has, as he's already described that he has, that, then even though he may not have read the entire body of sutras, all should follow him. Why? <clears throat> Reading the entire body of sutras is an easy act. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Upholding the law in the latter day is a difficult, difficult. act. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. All should follow him because he can uphold the six the, the, the six difficult acts. In addition to the three pronouncements of the Buddha in the treasure tower chapter of the Lotus Sutra, we all know what that is now, right? Mm -hmm. Guy's got to go in the fifth half millennium, all right? And the, two, the, and the pronouncements, uh, pardon me, the Devadatta chapter contains two enlightening <coughs> admonitions. The first reveals that Devadatta will attain Buddhahood. Devadatta was a man of incorrigible disbelief of the type called Ichkantika, and yet it's predicted that he will in the future become a Buddha called the Thus Come One Heavenly King. The 40 volumes of the Nirvana Sutra state that all beings, including the Ichkantikas, possess the Buddha nature. But the actual proof of that is found in this chapter of the Lotus Sutra and nowhere else. There are countless other persons, such as the monk, uh, Sunakshatra or King Ajashatru who have committed the five cardinal sins and slandered the law. But Devadatta is cited as one example to represent all the countless others. He is the chief offender and it is assumed that all lesser offenders will fare as he does. Thus it is revealed that all those who commit the five or the seven cardinal sins or who slander the law or who are Ishkantikas inherently opposed to taking faith will become Buddhas. Like the thus come one, heavenly king, poison turns into sweet dew, the finest of all flavors. Everybody understands that, right? Everybody's predicted to attain Buddhahood. All right? The second admonition concerns the fact that the, dra that the dragon king's daughter uh, attained Buddhahood. When she attained Buddhahood, this does not mean simply that one person did so. It reveals the fact that all women will attain Buddhahood. Mm -hmm. In the various Hinayana Sutras there were preached before the Lotus Sutra, it is denied that women can ever attain Buddhahood. In the Mahayana Sutras, other than the Lotus Sutra, it would appear that women can attain Buddhahood or be, re be reborn in the Pure Land, but they may do so only after they have changed into some other form. Mm -hmm. It is not the kind of immediate attainment of Buddhahood mm -hmm. that is based on actual Ichin and Sanzen. Yes. that is based on the doctrine of 3,000 realms in a single moment of life. It is based on actual Ichin and Sanzen. Yes. Thus, it is an attainment of Buddhahood or rebirth in the Pure Land in name only and not in reality. Okay? Mm. The Dragon King's daughter represents the one example that stands out for all the rest. When the Dragon King's daughter attained Buddhahood, it opened up the way for attaining Buddhahood for all women in latter ages. Confucianism... Everybody knows what that is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Preaches filial piety and care for one's parents, but it is limited to this present life. It provides no way for one to assist one's parents in their future lives, and the Confucian sages and worthies are therefore sages and worthies in name only and not in reality because they couldn't save their parents. Brahmanism, though it, is rec though it recognizes the existence of past and present lives, similarly offers no means to assist uh, one's parents to a better life in the future. Buddhism alone can do so, and thus it is the true way of sages and worthies. But in the Hinayana and Mahayana Sutras preached before the Lotus Sutra, and in the schools based on those sutras, to gain the way even for oneself is impossible. One can hardly hope to do anything for one parents, one's parents either. Mm -hmm. Though the texts of these sutras may say that they can bring about mm -hmm. enlightenment, in reality, that is not the case. 
Only with the preaching of the Lotus Sutra in which the Dragon King's daughter attained Buddhahood did it become evident that the attainment of Buddhahood was a possibility for all mothers. And when it was revealed that even an evil man such as Devadatta could attain Buddhahood, it became evident that Buddhahood was a possibility for all fathers. The Lotus <laughs> Sutra is a classic of filial piety of Buddhism. It is the classic of filial piety of Buddhism. Thus ends my discussion of the two admonitions contained in the Devadatta chapter. Mm. Awed by the five proclamations of, of the Buddha made in the treasure tower, the three pronouncements, you know, those five, the treasure tower in the Devadatta chapters, the countless bodhisattvas promised the Buddha that they would propagate the Lotus Sutra as described in the encouraging devotion chapter. Everybody's with me? Mm. I will hold up this passage of the Sutra like a bright mirror so that all may see how the present day priests of the Zen precepts precepts, Nimbutsu and Nimbutsu schools, and their lay supporters are guilty, guilty of slandering the law. On the twelfth day of the ninth month of last year, between the hours of the rat and ox, between 11 p.m. and 3 a.m., this person named Nitrin was beheaded. It is his soul that has come to this island of Sado, and in the second month of the following year, Snowbound is writing this to send to his close disciples. The description of the evil age in the encouraging devotion chapter seems terrible, but one who cares nothing about oneself for the sake of the law has nothing to be frightened about. Others reading it will be terrified. This scriptural uh, passage is the bright mirror the Shakyamuni Mini Treasures and the Buddhas of the Ten Directions left for the future of Japan. Left for me. Um, and in which the present state of the country is reflected. It may also be regarded as a keepsake from me. As a keepsake from me. Now, what was contained in that passage, in that paragraph on page 269, is the Buddhist concept of casting off the transient and revealing the true. And this is a very important concept. It's a concept that actually has been attributed only to Shakyamuni until we got to Nietzsche and Shoshu. Okay? And then who attributed it and, and, and figured it out as far as the latter day of the law for the Buddhism of the sowing? Nichikan. Mm -hmm. So let me read to you the definition of casting off the transient and revealing the true, which is what? Ho Shaku Kimpan. Okay? <laughs> Hoshaku Kimpon. I achieved Hoshaku Kimpon. That clarity. Casting off the transient and revealing the truth. The revealing of a Buddha's true status as a Buddha. And setting aside that, that Buddha the setting aside of that Buddha's provisional or transient identity. Okay? It's the point in time you no longer become a Soka Gakkai member and become a Bodhisattva of the earth. In the in the lifespan, 16th chapter of the Lotus Sutra. Shakyamuni declares that in all the worlds the heavenly and human beings and asuras all believe that the present Shakyamuni Buddha after leaving the palace of the Shakyas seated himself in the palace place of meditation not far from the city of Gaya, Gaye and there uh, attained supreme perfect enlightenment. But men it has been immeasurable, boundless, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, millions of Nayudas of Kalpas since I in fact attained Buddhahood. Through this statement, he discards his provisional identity as the Buddha who first attained enlightenment under the Bodhi tree in India and reveals his original enlightenment in, or the enlightenment he attained numberless major world system dust particle kalpas in the past. For the first time in the Lotus Sutra, in the 16th chapter of the Lotus Sutra, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. the, this concept has also been applied to Nichiren yeah. who wrote in the opening uh, of the eyes on the 12th day of the ninth month, what I just read, Last year, between the hours of the rat and the ox, <clears throat> this person named Nitrin was beheaded. It is his soul that has come to this island of Sado in the, tenth, in the second month of the following year. Snowbound is writing this to send to his close disciples. Nichikan, <clears throat> the 26th high chief priest of Taisekaji Temple, who is known up for his commentaries on Nitrin's writings, interpreted this passage on two levels. First, the passage, this person named Nitrin was beheaded, corresponds to the passage from the Lotus Sutra that reads, ignorant people will attack us with swords and staves, and his soul has, that has come to the uh, island of Sado corresponds to the Lotus Sutra passage, again and again we will be banished. This 
Nishikan said, shows that Nichiren is the votary of the Lotus Sutra who lives in the spirit expressed in the Sutra to care nothing for our bodies or lives, but are anxious only for the unsurpassed way, which is why he says here, but one who cares nothing about oneself for the sake of the law is nothing to be frightened about. He's referring to the same thing. That's the same thing that inspired him to bring forth the Buddha nature that existed in his life to create the Buddhism of the sowing. You understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. Second, Nichikan attributed a deeper significance to these passages, citing another passage from Nichiren's writings, persecu writing, persecution by sword and staff that reads, all the Buddhas of the past, present and future, attain enlightenment during the hours of the ox and the tiger between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. That's on page 965. <laughs> and compares this with the above passage from the opening of the eyes, the hours of the uh, rat and the ox. Indicates the time Nichiren is, as an ordinary person died, hence the phrase, this person named Nichiren was beheaded. Because the hour of the tiger is the time immediately following Nichiren's attempted execution, Nichiren, uh, Nichikan interprets this to indicate the time the Buddha, the, that Nichiren, the time Nichiren, as the Buddha was born. Hence the phrase, it is his soul that has come to this island of Sado. In, in, in identifying Nichiren, as the Buddha of the latter day of the law, Nichikan also referred to a passage from Nichiren's reply to Kyo that reads, I, Nichiren, have inscribed my life in Sumi, ink. So believe in the Gohonzon with your whole heart. The Buddha's will is the Lotus Sutra, but the soul of Nichiren is nothing other than Nam Myoho Rengekyo. Okay? So the basis of Hoshaku Kimpan is contained within that, that uh, paragraph. Mm -hmm. from, the op from the opening of the eyes. Continuing at the bottom of page 269. <clears throat> the encouraging devotion chapter states, we beg you not to worry after the Buddha has passed into extinction in an age of fear and evil, we will preach far and wide. There will be many ignorant people who will curse and speak ill of us and will attack us with swords and staves, but we will endure all these things. In that evil age, there will be monks in perverse wi with perverse wisdom and hearts that are fawning and crooked who suppose that they have attained what they have not attained. This is the continuation of the, 20, of the, of the encouraging devotion chapter. Being proud and boastful in heart. Or there will be forest-dwelling monks living in retirement who will claim they are preaching the true way, despising and looking down on all humankind, greedy for profit and support. They will preach the law to respect it and re uh, to, pardon me, to white-robed laymen and will be respected and revered by the world as though they were arhats who possess the six transcendental powers. These men with evil in their hearts, constantly thinking of worldly affairs, will borrow the name of forest-dwelling monks to take delight in proclaiming our faults. Because in the midst of the great assembly they constantly try to defame us, they will address the rulers, high ministers, brahmins and householders, as well as the other monks, slandering and speaking evil of mm -hmm. us, saying, these are men of perverted views who preach non-Buddhist doctrines. In a muddied age, in an evil age, uh, <clears throat> there will be many things to fear. Evil demons will take possession of others and through them uh, curse, revile, and heap, she heap shame on us. The evil monks of that muddied age, failing to understand the Buddha's expedient means, how he preaches the law in accordance with what is appropriate, will confront us with foul language and fr angry frowns. Again and again we will banish, be banished. Continuing. The eighth volume of the annotations on the words and phrases of the Lotus <coughs> Sutra comments as follows. In this passage, three types of arrogance are cited. First, there is a section that exposes people of mistaken views. This represents the arrogance and presumption of lay people. Next, there is a section that exposes <coughs> the arrogance and presumption of members of the Buddhist clergy. This is the section. That, uh, third is the section that expo uh, exposes an, uh, the arrogance and presumption of those who pretend to be false sages. Of these three, the first can be endured, the second exceeds the first, and the third is the most, most formidable of all. This is because the second and third ones are increasingly harder to recognize for what they really are. Mm -hmm. The Dharma, Dharma teacher, Chi Tu, writes in Tung Chuan. First, regarding the verse section that begins with, there will be many ignorant people. The first part tells us how, tells how the votaries of the Lotus Sutra must endure evils inflicted by the body, mouth, and mind of their opponents. This refers to the non-Buddhist and evil uh, lay Buddhists. The next part 
that begins with, in that evil age deals with the arrogant members of the Buddhist clergy. The third part that begins, or there will be forest dwelling monks, deals with the members of the clergy who pretend to be <clears throat> sages and use their position so that they can act as leaders of all the other evil people. <clears throat> and the same text goes on to say, the section that begins, because in the midst of the great assembly, describes how these men will appeal to the government authorities, slandering the law and its practitioners. In the ninth month, Pardon me. In the ninth volume of the Nirvana Sutra, we, we read, Good men, there are each kantikas or persons of incorrigible disbelief. They pretend to be arhats living in deserted places and speaking slanderly, slanderously of the correct and equal sutras of the great vehicle. Do you understand what they just said? They pretend to be arhats living in deserted places and speaking slanderously of the correct and equal sutras of the great vehicle. When ordinary people see them, they suppose they are true arhats and speak of them as, as great bodhisattvas. Great bodhisattvas. <coughs> it also says the Nirvana Sutra. At that time, this sutra will be widely propagated throughout Jampavipa. In that age, there will be evil monks uh, who will steal this sutra and divide it into many parts, losing the color, scent, and flavor of the correct teaching that it contains. These evil men will read and recite this sutra, but they will ignore and put aside the profound and vital principles that the thus come one has expounded in it and replace them with ornate rhetoric and meaningless talk. They will tear off the first part of the sutra and stick it, in on, in the, stick it on the end. Tear off the end and put it at the beginning. Uh, 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 put the end at the beginning in the, uh, pardon me, Put the end and the beginning in the middle, and the middle at the beginning or the end. You must understand that these evil monks are companions of the devil. Do be aware of that that actually did happen. Do you understand that? That we read Kumara Jiva's translation because it's been, uh, it's been supported by Nanye Tintai and on mm -hmm. <laughs> as being correct, but... Translations of the Lotus Sutra by others. Don't follow the 28 chapter starting with introduction, entering with universal worthy. Okay? So, <clears throat> that did actually occur. In light of the... <clears throat> Pardon me? Where was it? The sixth volume. Where is that? Point. Does anybody have the same book I'm in? Uh, you must understand that this... Okay, right. The six-volume Paramita Sutra states, there are also Ichikantikas who <coughs> resemble Arhats, but who commit evil deeds. Uh, these are also... Ar there are also Arhats who resemble Ichikantikas, but display merciful hearts. The Ichikantikas who look uh, like Arhats spend their time slandering the correct and equal sutras to the populace. <coughs> the Arhats who look like Ichikantikas, on the other hand, are critical of the voice hearers and go about preaching the correct and equal sutras. They address the populace saying, you and I are all bodhisattvas. Why? Because each living being possesses the Buddha nature. But the populace will probably call such men each kantikas. In the Nirvana Sutra, the Buddha speaks as follows. After I have passed, into, passed away, after the former day of the law has ended and the middle day of the law has begun, there will be monks who will give the appearance of abiding by the rules of monastic discipline, but they will scarcely ever read or recite the sutras and instead will crave all kinds of food and drink to nourish their bodies. Though they wear the clothes of a monk, they will go about searching for alms like so many huntsmen with who, narrowing their eyes, stalk softly. They will be like a cat on the prowl for a mice, and they will constantly reiterate these words, I have attained our hotship. Out outwardly, they will seem to be wise and good, but within they will harbor greed and jealousy. And when they are asked to preach the teachings, they will say nothing, like Brahmins who have taken a vow of silence. They are not true monks. They merely have the appearance of monks. Consumed by their erroneous views, they slander the correct teaching. In the light of the sun and the moon, there are the Lotus Sutra preached on Eagle Peak and the Nirvana Sutra, uh, and, and the Nirvana Sutra preached at the Sal Grove. Or in the uh, bright mirrors, there are the commentaries of Niolo, of Pi Ling, and Chung Tu, of uh, Tong Chuan. 
who can discern without a trace of obscurity the ugly faces of the priests of the various schools of present day Japan, especially the Zen precepts and Nimbusa schools. The Lotus Sutra and the wonder of the Wonderful Law says in the encouraging devotion chapter, after the Buddha has passed into extinction in an age of fear and evil, and the Peaceful Practices chapter says, in the evil age hereafter, in the latter age, and in the latter age hereafter, when the law is about to perish. The Distinction and Benefits chapter says, in the evil age of the latter day of the law. The Medicine King chapter says, in the last 500 year period. The Exhortation to Preach chapter of the Lotus Sutra of the Correct Law says, in the latter age hereafter, and in the latter age to come. The same type of language is found in the Supplemental Lotus Sutra of the Wonderful Law. Look, Tentai states, in the middle day of the law, the three schools of the south and the seven schools of the north are the enemies of the Lotus Sutra. And Dingyo states at the end of the middle day of the law, the scholars of the six Nara schools are the enemies of the Lotus Sutra. In the time of Tentai and Dingyo, the three types of enemies mentioned above had not yet appeared. Had not yet appeared. But me, we must recall yet. But we must recall that when Shakyamuni Buddha, the Lord of Teachings and many treasures, sat side by side in the treasure tower like the sun and moon, and the Buddhas who were emanations of Shakyamuni had come from the ten directions and were ranged from the trees like so many stars, then it was said that, that after the thousand years of the former day of the law and the thousand years of the middle day of the law, at the beginning of the latter day of the law, there would be three types of enemies of the Lotus Sutra. How could this pronouncement be made by the 800,000 million Nayudas of Bodhisattvas have been an empty or false prediction? Mm -hmm. It is now some 2,200 years since the thus come one passed away. Even if it were possible to point straight to the earth and miss it, if the flowers were to cease blooming in the mm -hmm. spring, till I, I still I am certain that these three powerful enemies exist in the land of Japan. If so, then who is to be numbered among the three powerful enemies? And who is to be accounted a votary of the Lotus Sutra? It is a troubling question. Are we, I and my, I and my disciples, to be numbered among the three enemies? Or are we to be numbered among the votaries of the Lotus Sutra? A troubling question. In the, 24 year, in the 24th year of the reign of King Chiao, the fourth ruler of the Chao dynasty, with the cyclical sign Kinyo Tora, in the, mid, in the night of the eighth day of the fourth month, the five colored light spread across the sky from north to south until it was all bright as noon. The earth shook in six different ways, and though no rain fell, the rivers and streams, wells and ponds brimmed with water. All the trees and plants bloomed and bore fruit. It was a wondrous happening indeed. King Chao was greatly surprised. The grand historian Yu Su Yu performed divina, divina, divi, divinations, divinations and announced, A sage has been born in the western region. What about our country? asked King Chao to Su Yu, uh, to which Su Yu replied, Nothing particular will happen for now, but 1,000 years from now, the words of this sage will be brought to this country and bring benefit to all living beings. Su Yu was a scholar of non-Buddhist texts, who had not yet in the slightest degree freed himself from the illusions of thought and desire, and yet he was able to know what would happen a thousand years in the future. And just as he predicted, 1,015 years after the Buddha's passing in the reign of the Emperor Ming, the second ruler of the later Han Dynasty, in the 10th year of the Yongping era, with the cyclical sign Hinotou, the doctrines of Buddhism were introduced to China. On quite a different level in the prediction I have described above that was made by the various bodhisattvas in the presence of, of Shakyamuni Buddha, many treasures and the Buddhas up from the ten directions that were emanations of Shakyamuni Buddha. In view of these predictions, how could the three types of enemies of the Lotus Sutra help be, be present in Japan today? Uh, time? Yes? Okay, I've got, because I've stopped five, day, five pages in, I'll, I'll finish the, the last five pages before I start again on page 272 of the Opening of the Eyes. Uh, in the Buddha's successor sutra, the Buddha, uh, the Buddha is recorded as saying. That's where we'll start again next week. Thank okay? you. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.